Welcome to Gamer Mouse and Happy Holidays from your host, Tanara Kurinov. Maybe next year I'll actually have a Christmas-themed game for you. But in the meantime, well, don't we all hate holiday traffic? So why not celebrate the holidays by playing a game where we can ram the traffic straight off the road? Here's Burning Rubber. Burning Rubber is a top-down driving game for the Macintosh released in 1996 by Jonas Ekterhoff, and according to the instructions, it was programmed in Pascal when he was the ripe old age of 15. Jeez, I didn't even know what Pascal was when I was 15, much less how to program in it. This is not to be confused with the earlier 1993 Amiga game Burning Rubber, or the much earlier arcade game Bump and Jump in 1982, which was also known as Burnin' Rubber in Japan. As you might already see, this game moves fast. Some of you might think it's a little too fast. This time it's not an emulator issue. In fact, it's in the FAQ asking why he didn't put a speed governor in there. The answer is that he did. The game is supposed to run fast, otherwise it wouldn't be a challenge. Jonas also made this game to address the lack of top-down driving games on the Mac, which I thought was pretty awesome. Unlike most people, me included, who whine about a lack of games, this dude actually tried to do something about it. Playing it now, though, uh, the controls are kind of wonky, if that's even a word. I use it, so I say it's a word, so shut up if it really isn't. You turn quicker when you go faster, too, which is also kind of weird, so you can't really go slow and turn. Anyway, to complete the game, you have to go through ten stages of varying difficulty. Like the Rockies, that's spelled wrong, a winter wonderland, muddy wetlands, Arizona, and a military training facility. Like that episode of Malcolm in the Middle, where they almost get blown up. So you try to get points, 2,000 points to an extra life. The police don't do much besides fly around in a helicopter or drive around in a car once in a while, and if you run into them, they pull you over and give you a choice. Either pay a fine of 500 points, or take a chance and hope you don't die. They got me. Ah! As for the plot... What plot? Oh, you want me to make up a plot, don't you? Fine. Hmm, let's see... Okay, I've got a plot, I think. You're in a sports car trying to escape from the mob. But then that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You get points from destroying everything. Or maybe that's because everyone's with the mob. Maybe you're in Detroit. Oh wait, you lose a life if you run out of time, too. Maybe there's a bomb in your car and you're trying to get it away from civilization. Wait, no, you get points for killing people, though, so maybe you're a terrorist delivering a bomb. But then why is it ticking down already? Actually, you know what? Screw those plots! You're a maniac that's barreling through the streets causing chaos, mayhem, and destruction, and the points are just an imaginary construct inside of your head to give you some justification for the horrible, horrible deaths that you're causing. And for some reason, everywhere off-road is laced with freaking nitroglycerin. Maybe it's the mob. Heck if I know. Speaking of dying, this game, aside from the explosive ground anyway, is inconsistent about what you can hit. Ramming a simple toll booth kills you, which shows up in the very first level, too. But you can go through a train. Let me repeat that one. You can crash through a train, but a toll booth makes you explode. Damn, that is a strong toll booth. But at least it's not like Need for Speed, which seems to think that toll booths are made of freaking cardboard and paper mache. Here's another little practical joke for the driver when you're going through the toll booth. Well. Not actually through the booth itself. Shit, that would be a big practical joke. This game, unlike the sequel, actually let you run people over, too. I didn't really expect that from this game. In the sequel, the only living thing you hit is a dog. Though it's not like the people inside the cars aren't experiencing fiery deaths, too. But it's a video game. We never really think about that when it's vehicular. Or we just pretend there isn't even people in the vehicles. You know, like Burnout. This is a pretty short game, but even the author says he was bored with it after a little while and had a high score of about 5,000 points. And there's no change in handling on, say, snow or mud, though there is a couple of twists in there, like the military base level has tanks that actually fire at you once in a while, and there's a level in a completely dark tunnel where you have to follow the signs to avoid dying. If that sounds horribly cheap and difficult, don't worry, it's not a very long level. And for those of you who are thinking, I want the whole game to be like that, well, you're a masochist. And then there's a level where there's dead ends if you don't follow the tiny little signs, and that's when you find out that you can't go into reverse in this game. 
Oh, the last two levels have jumps. Yeah, jumps, meaning you have to hit them right and land on the road on the other side or you die. The last level has a toll booth line and five jumps. Five freaking jumps. If you hit any of those six obstacles wrong, you die. Memorization and luck are key to getting through all ten stages. There's bonus multipliers that really help with getting extra lives, but how much they multiply and where they appear is random, aside from there being one per level and, you know, actually appearing on the road. So you have to get lucky to collect them. I've only gotten up to halfway through level 10 without cheating. So close yet, so far. Oh yes, you can cheat by holding option and pressing start, and that lets you select a level. Because of that, I know that the levels loop if you go through all 10, so you can keep going as long as you have lives. If I do get through all 10 in one go, I'll, I don't know, put up a let's play or something. So, burning rubber is short, simple, a little hard to control, and at the time it was 10 bucks. Would anyone pay 10 bucks for this today? Probably not. Might make a nice iPhone app or something. Back in 1996? Maybe. Some more police involvement and smoother steering would make this better. But this wasn't the one I played, I played its sequel, so that's what we'll be doing next. This is Tanara Kurinov signing out, and I'll be speeding off to work on the next episode of Gamer Mouse. Speaking of the time bonus, this game made that weird too. I mean... Yeah, 